Hi YouTube, it is me, uh, Miss Moxie22, aka Candice. Um, I've definitely been meaning on, uh, meaning to come and make a video for very long, but things have been hectic. Um, but uh, camp is officially over. If you guys remember, I was working at the YMCA this summer, and camp was over yesterday. So I am exhausted, but you know this is the life that I live. Um, <laughs> and school starts in like a week and a half. So yeah. Um, so I don't really know what this video is about per se, but they're just a kind of bunch of thoughts that have been going on through my head for the past month. Um, I guess in preparation of school starting and just kind of thinking about like the road ahead or this journey and my career and all that stuff. Um, so I wanted to come on and share a couple of things with you. Um, so a little brief recap, um, you know, I'm seven years post-op this past March. Um, so I guess I'm almost seven and a half years, March, April, May, June, July, August. Yeah, almost seven and a half years post-op from vertical sleeve. Um, I am in the stage of regain. Uh, yes, a stage. Um, <laughs> I am uh, 231 pounds. Um I am not where I was at 347, but I'm definitely not where I was at 181 or 199 or 195. <laughs> um, so regain sucks, but I do believe um, it is a stage that we, the weight loss surgery community, um, go through um, in this journey. A lot of us go through it, um, but some of us don't. Um, actually, I'm going to stand up and get, give you guys like a little look and see what I look like. Um, I don't know if you can actually like see me. There is like a lot of things going on here. Um, uh, but I haven't actually done a stand up thing in a while. So there you go. That's what I look like. Um, so anyway, I am trying to manage this stage of the journey. Um, my thoughts have been, you know, what would I do differently if I were preparing to um, have surgery like again, or let's just say I was gonna do revision surgery, right? Like what would I do differently to maybe prevent myself from entering into the regain stage? If that's even possible, but I'm, I'm thinking about it. So as you guys know, um, you know, where I pull from in terms of just these thoughts, um, you know, spirituality, education, um, psychoeducation. Um, I went to the Obesity Action Coalition conference uh, a couple weeks ago in New Orleans, uh, basically where there are patients, there are pre-op, post-op, there are just weight loss um, professionals, surgeons, uh, you name it, um, it's there. And it's just nice to be around people who are experiencing the same thing as well as being with uh, professionals who are uh, helping to um, help us through the, the situation. Um, I am in social work school, so that's a big component of you know my education. Um, I see a therapist uh, because I believe that I have um, uh, the emotional eating um, is... Um, you know, symptoms of eating disorder or something. So I feel like that was, I needed to get an uh, intervention and I needed some help. Um, so she just kind of helps me like talk it out and not necessarily the best option for me since I'm a talker, but, um, it's helped. Um, uh, but yeah, and, and it's helped in a way that I've been like able to notice like triggers and, uh, no, you know, such as if I'm feeling stressed out or anxious or sad or even happy or, you know, what are the things that um, make me feel that like quick, immediate feeling of emptiness? It's like a it's a burning pit in my stomach and I want to numb that pain and I want to fill that space up and not feel that. And so what do I do? I physically eat something. You know, and what I've been able to do um, is notice that I'm starting to get triggered um, and go, OK, something's happening. I I'm definitely upset. Um, don't go get something to eat because this is not you're not hungry and the, the, the feeling will pass. Um, but 
what would be different if I had a different kind of therapist, like a social worker. Um, uh, I would have somebody help me um, identify what those thoughts are and those feelings are that are leading to my actions of eating and helping me um, create some uh, coping skills in place of eating. Um, so back to the point, right? So what would I do differently if I were going through this journey again? Or, you know, what I can share for those who are fresh or those who are going through it or a little bit earlier, you know, uh, in their journey um, or later on in their journey or I don't know. Um, so, the, okay, so um, in like recovery, right, from like an addiction per se, uh, there are a few stages, right? So you've got like the pre-contemplation stage where a lot of people don't see that there is a solution and because they can't see the problem. Um, the next stage would be contemplation that they feel like something's happening, but they, they can't quite like put their finger on it and they want to like move forward from that space, but they just don't know what's really happening. Then there's a preparation stage where they're able to notice what's, um, what's going on and are starting to like take actions to start thinking about changing their actions. Then you have the action stage uh, where people are um, actually modifying their behavior such as like getting therapy or seeing a nutritionist or something like that. Um, then there is in between because um, then there's the maintenance stage right and so the maintenance is that like uh, they've like changed their behaviors and, um, you know, what they're doing is working for them and they're where they want to be, uh, after maintenance and most people, especially in our, in our community, we experience regain, which I consider is the relapse stage and not everybody goes through it, but I don't know what the difference between, um, people who experience a relapse and people who don't or regain and don't. Um, but ideally, uh, it's a lot of commitment. It's a lot of support. It's a lot of, um, but, but it's, it's more likely that people will go through the stages like a bunch of times before they actually hit a place where they're able to like maintain without like slipping. Um, so, great. <laughs> um, perhaps this will be something that I study, um, in my career, uh, so I can, you know, figure this out. Um, but you know, that's where I'm at right now. It's like, I'm in the relapse stage, you know, I've gained like 40, 50 pounds since my lowest weight. And I'm just like, okay, what's going on? Uh, one of the things that I, during this month, I have really tried to take a step back from my normal. So um, I'm doing like a little social media hiatus. Um, no Instagram, no Facebook, no Snapchat. Um, I just don't want to be triggered by the limelight of other people's lives. Everybody always puts like the highlights of their life on, on social media and I don't want to see it anymore. Um, not too long ago, somebody sent me a message and was like, oh my God, I'm thinking about having surgery. Um, when I get back from vacation and it just, it sent me in like a tailspin because I was just like, okay, so now she's going to go and have surgery and she's going to be successful for the first three or four years. It was freaking me out. I was like, why am I hating on her right now? <laughs> like, why? Like, that's not how I want to be, but that's how I felt. And I was like, nope, I need, I need to step back. I need to kind of focus on me. I need to be present to what's going on and, and not involved in everybody else's like life. Um, whether I go back or not, I don't know, but Right now, I'm enjoying not um, being visible. I'm making this video because I feel like um, there's like a a part a part of my life that's coming to an end in terms of, um, you know, the summer's over and I'm getting ready to go back to school and that's like its own crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, I just came back from New Orleans where the Obesity Action Coalition conference was held. Um, I didn't get any like crazy insights like I did last year um you know I you know it was nice to be around other pre and post-op patients professionals um you know those of the, the community that want to help you know move us forward um whether it's policy programs you know things like that um 
one thing I did take away from it was, you know, I'm having a hard time exercising. I haven't exercised in like months. You know, I made a video saying that I, you know, I went to spin class and I went, I like swam a little bit, but I haven't exercised at all, really. You know, I was like consistent, you know, four or five times a week. I mean, um, maybe six times on a good week, maybe seven times on a really good week. Um, but I haven't really stepped foot in a gym like that in like two or three months, maybe more than three months. Um, and something one of the physiologists was talking about was like exercise fatigue. And he was saying that, you know, I stood up and asked a question. I was like, listen, I'm burnt out. Like, what do I do? I've tried kickboxing. I've tried, um, you know, the regular gym, running, walking, this and that. And I was like, I'm like feeling like lazier than I don't know what. Um, and he was like, you know, you got to get creative. And one of the things that probably happened was I didn't, I didn't respect resting my body. And, um, I think that's probably true. Um, excuse me, I'm at work. Um, you know, I would go straight and I wouldn't even rest because I was like feeling that uh, euphoria and feeling those endorphins kicking and like loving how my body was turned out and high. Um, and I didn't stop. So I kind of burned out. So exercise fatigue. Um, and then I started taking free workouts, which is its own other like kind of level. And those of us who have like addiction, um, uh, I'll say sensitivity, um, taking like stimulants, not a good idea, but I've been able to kind of break that habit. Um, I haven't worked out nor have I taken a pre-workout and I do not want to continue to, um, uh, put them together as one, like feeling like I can't work out without the pre-workout cause I didn't start like that and I don't want to continue doing that. Um, so I'm like, nah, not everybody does this. I just feel like I got to figure out how to like get myself remotivated. I don't really know what that is right now. So that's part of this recovery for me is kind of like accepting where I'm at um, and not adding more onto my pile that already exists. So that's that. Okay, so let's go back. What would I do differently if I were telling myself eight years ago um, how to prevent uh, yourself from relapsing, right? Um, and, and maintaining, you know, my efforts. So... One thing we talked about at the conference was um, developing a team, right? A team to help you succeed. So if you think about it, um, let's say you came up with this big business venture, right? Um, and you are the creator of the business. You typically are not gonna be the person that does every single part of the business, right? You are going to have a business partner that's gonna help you, hold you accountable. There's gonna be an accountant, there's gonna be an office manager, there are gonna be clients, there are gonna be um, contractors and so on and so forth. So having a team together to help you manage all the pieces um, to make you successful are, is, is a key thing. So developing a team. So part of this team um, would be um, for uh, mental therapy, right? So you've got um, some sort of therapist that could be a psychologist, that could be a social worker, that could be, you know, a counselor, whatever the case is. Me personally, because I guess maybe I'm a little biased, but I'm not, okay? I think that social workers um, or behavioral therapists are really good um, key to the puzzle because they have special training in certain um, uh, cognitive therapies and um, coping skills are a major, major part to this. So if you typically cope with eating, it's not natural for you to just know other coping, like coping mechanisms. Like you just don't, it doesn't come to you naturally because if it did, then you might not do them. Um, but think about other people that have uh, drug addiction and drinking and stuff like that. They need other coping skills. Um, so social workers um, or people who are trained um, in that type of uh, therapy would help you develop healthy ways to manage, um, you know, when you're feeling those feelings um, that are emotionally driving you to make a decision. Um, so maybe a bariatric social worker, um, which might be me later on. <laughs> um, a dietitian, a bariatric dietitian for one. Um, you know, to help you manage how you're going to eat because a lot of what we're doing is not, it's not maintainable. It's not, your body eventually, like 
Okay, so when you lose weight, your metabolism speeds up. But then once you start to like regulate, your, metas- your metabolism slows down. So you cannot eat or exercise the same way that you were doing it in the very beginning in order to maintain it. One will increase and the other one will decrease. It's just not, it's not the way our bodies are made, okay? So um, I think that's another part to the regain. Also, um, physiologically speaking, um, some of us are predisposed to having a, um, to be more of a, of a, of a overweight um, person because um, we're all not overweight, right? There's like people in the world who are not, they don't experience this. So, and, and those of us who go through regain, how come the food just, how come we just start gaining the weight back? You know what I'm saying? So I think that it's important for us to be aware of how our bodies um, uh, are actually dealing with weight loss and like what happens and what's necessary for us to maintain this weight. Because in reality, for me to stay at 180 pounds, somebody would have had to tell me that I would have to, the the five days a week that I was exercising, I would have to probably increase that. So the food would have to stay the same like, like this minimal, you know, let's say 1200 calories. And then the five day a week workout, it would probably have to increase, which is not realistic. (laughs) It's not. Um, but I don't know. Um, so I definitely would have a trainer for that reason. Right. So, um, I definitely had a trainer in the beginning of my journey and then I started to learn some things and then I kind of went off my own and added different, um, components into my physical, uh, well-being. But, there's an accountability piece, um, you know, or physical goals that should be set, right? So maybe in the beginning of this, I wouldn't be like, yeah, I want to run a marathon. This is it, whatever. I might not even have known what kind of physical goals I wanted, but setting some sort of physical goal. I want to run a marathon. I want to um, do Tough Mudder. I want to do a bikini competition. I want to start swimming again. I want to be or be on the swim team. I want to be on, you know, some sort of physical um, goals because you need something to keep pushing you past the state of comfort or you're going to get you're going to burn out. Right. So you need to stay, um, stay creative and stay active with that. Um, And also having that spiritual component, because me, I'm, uh, I am Baptist. I do believe in God. Um, and um, I'm Christian. Um, sometimes like right now I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And I need to pull past myself in order to get the power and to get that feel that I'm craving. Because what, what God showed me this week was that all the external stuff die away all those things that fill me up my job at the ymca was so fulfilling to me it was so fulfilling i had all sorts of support i had spiritual support i had financial support i had social support um i had physical support um camp is over and yesterday morning my anxiety went to like a hundred because I was like, what am I going to do now? Now I get back and go back into the trenches. Now I have to like be home for a week. Now I'm going back to school where things are crazy. Now I don't have money and this and that. And I'm like, you see, this is the thing that the food, the drinking, the drugs, the, the money, the shopping, the whatever, all these things are external. They, they fade away. They go away. And you're left with exactly what you started with, you know, and God is the only thing that's going to be able to fill you up. And I mean, I, that's that's my belief. And I just am at a place where I am trying to really embrace my spirituality. And those of you who are not like religious, still having a spiritual component, pulling from some greater entity is really important in this journey um, or any recovery journey for that matter. Um but this is a 20 minute long video and I really apologize, but I'm, you know, sorry, not sorry. Um, because I just feel that, um, you know, through this process, this is, I have to share because it helps me process. Um, but it also might help somebody. Um, so, 
school's getting ready to start for me on the 6th, I believe, September, whatever that day is after, that Tuesday after um, Labor Day, um, I am getting ready to go into my last year of social work school, and this year is like the meat of my education for my master's. I am going to be interning at a, um, a for-profit organization on the east side of New York City um, that specializes in uh, eating disorders. Um, the social workers there, or behavioral therapists, um, specialize with uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy. They've got one-on-one -on -one training, they've got online training, they've got groups, they've got individual. Um, so I am definitely going to take whatever I can get for my own personal um, well-being as well as able to take into my career um, from this, this experience. Uh, unfortunately, my um, uh, supervisor, I don't think she actually respects the process of weight loss surgery, but I do. Uh, so this is going to be a really interesting journey. There's already been a little bit of friction, um, and it's an, you know another part of the situation that's got me all like freaking out. But you know what? Uh, God's going to see me through, and um, if he's for me, no one can be against me, yo. No, it's not going down. So I will take what I can learn from this, this woman, because she's awesome, and her business is such a great... Um, resource and I will use it to help cultivate what I'm trying to do for my future and for our community um, I think that's it guys I think that's uh, the end of my rant uh, for the day um, I don't know uh, thoughts questions comments concerns would be amazing um, if you list, watch this entire video awesome if not that's okay too um, but I will speak to you guys soon Enjoy the rest of your summer, uh, and that's it.